Pemmican is essentially the ultimate survival food. It's pretty much jerky that is blended up with some rendered fat. The classic Native American preparation was to dry the meat in the wind, then to pound it on a hard surface with a wooden mallet over a giant buffalo hide, and then they would gather all those pieces of meat and mix it with the fat that they melted over a fire. This was so labor intensive that it actually required two buffalo to feed a family that would make pemmican from one buffalo. The yield was only 90 pounds of pemmican for one 1,000 pound animal on the hoof. Initially, pemmican was only used in these Native American tribes in celebration or times of famine, but when Europeans moved over to the Americas, it was frequently sold to mountain men and then used as a ration for soldiers in the war. It was actually so important that wars were pretty much centered around this food. If you guys want to read more on the history of pemmican, a great book is The Fat of the Land by Volyamir Stephenson. Not only is that an amazing book for the carnivore diet, but the latter half of that book is only on pemmican. I'll post a link to that PDF down in the comments below. Pemmican is by far the healthiest preserved food we can have just because there's nothing added to it. You just dry the meat out, you render the fat, you don't add salt, you don't add seasonings, you don't add preservatives, and that's that. If it's made with high quality animal products, grass-fed meat, wild buffalo, wild bison, the fat of these animals is inherently very high in vitamins. So not only is it free of negative components, it is also one of the most nutritious from a nutrient standpoint. In the book I mentioned earlier, The Fat of the Land, they didn't actually seem to get scurvy from consuming only pemmican, but the settlers that consumed salted, cured, and potted meats and traditionally preserved foods did suffer from scurvy. One other interesting note is that fine pemmican is essentially a higher quality pemmican. It was made with the finer cuts of meat as well as the more favored fatty parts of the animal, like the marrow. So tying in with indigenous food preparation and the sheer variety, I'm sure there were many different ways to prepare pemmican and also various qualities of pemmican. Uh, what we're gonna do is just take some ribeye, slice it as thin as possible, and put it in a dehydrator. The difference between what I do and what most people do when making jerky is going to be the temperature we dehydrate it at. So I'm just gonna slice this thin and lay it out on the dehydrator trays. What you wanna do here is trim the fat off and then you can render this fat with the rest of your beef fat when you're making the tallow or lard. And one thing I like doing is I like taking like a mallet, a rolling pin, you can even use your hand. I press down the meat and flatten it out so that it dehydrates quicker. And guys, the cut of meat here really doesn't matter as long as you can slice it thin. Since this is going to get pulverized in a blender, I suggest a cheaper cut. Something the Native Americans used to add to their pemmican was berries. And here I actually have some organic blueberries. These are from Whole Foods. The reason I like these is one summer, I went around to every supermarket and I bought every single berry you can imagine. And these were the best tasting berry by far. They were the sweetest, the mo they had the most pungent blueberry flavor. So all I do for the blueberries is I just pour them on the dehydrator rack. And I'm not gonna make a lot here. But keep in mind guys, these shrink so much and these blueberries aren't exactly cheap. You can make quite a bit more pemmican for the price that you're spending on blueberries if you wanna add a lot of them. I'm gonna put the meat in the dehydrator. Blueberries on top so the meat doesn't drip on top of them. And you could do this in an oven, but then it's not going to be kept at a raw temperature. Uh, so dehydrators can stay below 115 degrees. They can go down to 100 degrees. So I'm just gonna put this outside so it doesn't smell everything up. And then uh, I'm gonna turn it on a low temperature. It's probably going to take 24, 36 hours. The difference between fine pemmican or a very high quality pemmican is not only how finely the meat is ground, it also has to do with the type of fat used. 
marrow fat or fat from a higher quality part of the animal is deemed to be better than trim fat, suet, fat from other parts of the animal. Uh, this was in Native American cultures specifically. So here I have some raw beef fat. We are going to render our own tallow fresh. This allows us to control the temperature that it's rendered at as well as do it uh, slow over a period of time and not have any oxidized fat essentially. So I got two pounds of fat that's going to render here, probably take a couple hours. Yes, you can buy render fat. I don't suggest high omega-6 fats like pork lard or chicken fat. Uh, any of those things are going to be you know, inflammatory and the goal of nutrient density won't be achieved. The higher quality fat that we use here, the higher quality the end product would be. Uh, for anyone that thinks, oh, can I use clarified butter or ghee? Yes, you can, but I've made pemmican with clarified butter in the past and people have crucified me for doing so. I think the flavor of clarified butter, and you can make clarified butter raw as well. I do have a video doing that. I think that would be a great option for pemmican, but it is definitely not traditional. So keep that in mind. So the fat's been rendering for a couple hours. We're just going to strain it now into another pot. Now we have some nice golden beef tallow. You can pass this through a finer strainer if you'd like. So I have all my components of the pemmican. I have the melted golden beef fat. We have our dehydrated beef here. And then I have the blueberries. As you can see, the blueberries shrunk substantially. So the only issue to keep in mind here is that this meat is very hard, very brittle. Uh, I'm not too confident in my blender's ability to do this, but I will try it nevertheless. If I was making pemmican on a larger scale, I would buy a meat grinder or I would bring this to a butcher for them to grind it up. I do have a food processor, but I've tried this in the food processor and it really ruins the blade. In regards to fat to protein ratio and actually making this pemmican, it's important to note that jerky is one third of the original weight of the meat. So it takes three pounds of meat to make one pound of jerky. In these native groups and indigenous groups, they would consume six pounds of meat for every one pound of fat. But that was fresh meat. So if we divide that meat by one third that they consumed, they consumed two pounds of dried meat per one pound of fat. So our ratio of meat to fat in the pemmican is going to be two to one. Very, very simple. You just weigh the meat, the dried meat, and then you add half as much fat. If you want to read more about the fat ratios in pemmican, that book, The Fat of the Land, goes over how much the soldiers had to eat when they altered the fat ratio. I think they only needed to eat three quarters of a pound of 80% fat pemmican per day and the other ones like 60% fat, 70% fat, they ended up having to eat more and were never satiated on the lower fat content pemmicans. All right, so first I'm going to weigh out how much beef I have. So 284 grams of beef, we'll add 142 grams of fat after we blend this up. All right, let's see how this goes. So let's put it in. Two pieces. So yeah, this is definitely not, <laughs> this is definitely not something I would do at home. I would definitely bring this to a butcher shop if I was doing this in a high volume. Try putting a bunch, let's try putting a bunch in. So I think I, I definitely have hearing issues after that, but it worked. So there's our shredded beef, guys. So now I'm going to add 140 grams of the fat. And, and these ratios might vary depending on your lean body mass as well as your physical activity. So there's our pemmican guys. Imagine doing 90 pounds of this and storing it in a buffalo hide like the Native Americans did. I guess we have to try it, right? And keep in mind, we dehydrated the meat at a raw temperature. And by keeping it at a raw temperature, we preserve more of the vitamins, we keep more of the antiscorbutic properties of the meat, the vitamin C content is higher. It smells like doesn't have much of a smell to it. It just smells like beef tallow. So the reason I think this tastes good is because when you dehydrate beef, you concentrate the flavor. This is essentially three times more flavorful than raw beef.
So it makes a lot of sense. I would definitely not add salt to this, especially since it's a dried food, it would even dehydrate you more. Uh, we're gonna throw, we'll throw the berries in. Uh, I remember making this before and I didn't really notice a difference in taste with the berries. And the berries didn't seem to uh, affect the taste too much. I probably just keep the berries and the meat separate and just eat them on their own at the end as like dessert. So there we have a bite with quite a few berries in it. Yeah, I can, I can see how the berries make this more enjoyable. You don't really taste them at the start, but as you start chewing on the berries towards the end, you get, you get that blueberry flavor. So either way, you can't really go wrong, whether you decide to add berries or not, it tastes perfectly good on its own. I'm sure the berries would add variety if this was the only food you were eating. In regards to storage, it was said that this was kept good for several years pretty easily. And there were some interesting stories in that book, The Fat of the Land, where they kept it for very, very long periods of time and it was fine. I usually put this in mason jars. Uh, I mean, as I said earlier, they used to wrap this in buffalo hides. I'm sure you could wrap it in some sort of wax paper or if you're as crazy as me, maybe try to find some sort of leather and wrap it in that yourself. So if you want to do this ahead of time, keep in mind the amount of meat that you can dehydrate at once. That's going to be your real limiting factor. And then you're really going to have to bring it to a butcher to grind up any reasonable volume of meat. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support the channel, please like, subscribe, and share the video. Uh, down in the comments below is my Amazon shop. I do have preserved foods like cod liver oil. There is some dried blueberries on there, I believe, as well as macadamia nuts. All decent preserved foods to take with you on a trip. If you guys want to check out my website, frank stefanocom I do have some hygiene products available, and you can reach out to me for consultations on that website or via email, frankatofano at gmail.com in regards to improving your life, whether it's increasing your vitamin D3 levels, fixing your source of water, and of course, diet and exercise. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram, guys. Please follow me. If you do want personalized answers to your questions, Patreon is the best way to do that. Uh, but outside of that, guys, enjoy the rest of your weekend.